the next presentation is laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy after failed vertical banded gastroplasty. This is by doctors Michael Lee and Daniel Scott from University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, and the video will be presented by Dr. Lee. Uh, thank you, Sages. Um, it's both an honor and a pleasure uh, to present our work from UT Southwestern. Um, also, special thanks to Dr. Daniel Scott and Dr. Angel Caban uh, for their help on this video. Um, this is our case presentation um, of a woman. I've got nothing to disclose also. So this is our case presentation of a woman who was presented to our clinic after her failed vertical band and gastroplasty. Uh, she had a BMI of 57 and had severe complaints of reflux disease. Um, also in her history, um, it was significant for many open abdominal operations uh, as listed here. Uh, she had an initial weight loss of 70 pounds, however, then regained all of her weight. Um, it's also interesting that um, she had a very large incisional hernia, which is very difficult to diagnose at first. And uh, this was apparently missed on CT scan, uh, but later found on barium enema uh, to contain a large amount of uh, transverse colon as seen here. So she underwent a laparoscopic um, incisional hernia repair with dual-sided mesh. And it was soon after this operation that she began having these symptoms of reflux, um, which progressively worsened uh, throughout the next several years. Uh, eventually, she was found to have a moderate-sized hiatal hernia. Although her previous images and her endoscopy were normal, um, it was unclear to the extent that this hiatal hernia had been causing her symptoms uh, versus a problem with her vertical band and gastroplasty. And at this point, her symptoms became uh, very intractable and uh, severely lifestyle limiting. So we offered her a laparoscopic exploration uh, with a plan to proceed carefully, uh, depending on her intraoperative findings. And this is an illustration of her ports. Uh, we later upsized one of the 12 millimeter ports for 15 uh, to accommodate a stapler. Uh, we found that a Nathanson was very uh, helpful in our exposure and we positioned her in padded spreader bars uh, so that this could facilitate a steep reverse Chandelenburg position. Um, we also gave her um, DVT prophylaxis with subcutaneous heparin and um, sequential compression devices. So when we entered her abdomen, we found that she had many dense adhesions, um, especially along her mesh. Uh, these were lysed using the ultrasonic dissector And we also found that she had a very large and thickened liver edge with many attachments on both the front and the back side of the liver. And this occupied a lot of the, uh, the left upper quadrant. So we began by opening up the lesser sac and dissected along the greater curvature. And as you can see, we had very little workspace. So we sutured the perigastric fat to the abdominal wall to um, create some more working space. Um, this allowed us to continue our dissection and we mobilized the posterior stomach as well as the fundus and divided the phrenoesophageal uh, membrane. We then reduced the hiatal hernia which was actually quite small compared to her pre-op imaging. And we then created a retrogastric tunnel and then passed the penrose drain uh, to wrap this around. Uh, we then used uh, endoscopy, which revealed um, an intact vertical staple line, as well as a, st a severely stenosed uh, band outlet. Uh, she also had a very dilated proximal pouch, indicating that she had a very high pressure system. Uh, we then left the endoscope in place, um, which actually helped us identify uh, this band, which appeared to be fully integrated um, within her stomach. Uh, luckily, we found a proline stitch, which was attached in her prior operation. And uh, we found that this was consistent with the appearance of, of Marlex. Although we had wanted to leave the band alone, uh, we felt that this band was uh, nearly obstructing. And so we dissected off a centimeter off the anterior uh, surface of the stomach. So given her super obese BMI and also her um, scar tissue along her staple line, and Marlex band, we felt that uh, this would compromise a fund application as well as set her up for uh, a high recurrence rate. Also, she had extensive adhesive disease in her lower abdomen, and we thought that uh, this would not make a ruin y gastric bypass feasible. So at this point, we thought that sleeve gastrectomy would be uh, her best option. So 
So we made sure that the posterior attachments of the stomach were freed. And then we uh, began applying linear cutting staplers, five centimeter proximal uh, to the pylorus. Uh, we left the endoscope in place and we used this in place of a bougie, um, which we loosely abutted. Uh, we continued firing our staplers. And unfortunately later you'll see that um, we had a misfire of one of our staple loads. Uh, we eventually used a blue loaded buttress load to transect the remainder of the stomach and um, later you'll see that um, we left a 15 millimeter uh, gastric cuff of tissue at the angle of hiss. And because of our compromised staple line and also the extensive scar tissue, we felt that uh, we would oversew the staple line for added security. We then repeated our endoscopy, which showed no evidence of a leak using air insufflation and also methylene blue dye. Uh, we additionally applied fibrin sealant along our suture line uh, for added security. The hiatal opening was closed using an interrupted stitch. And we made sure not to close the hiatal opening too tightly. Eventually we, re we removed the uh, gastric specimen and we closely examined it for the, appear the appearance of two staple lines. And we eventually left the drain um, in the uh, vicinity of our repair. The fascial closure sites, uh, the fascial sites were closed using a fascial closure device. Uh, Postoperatively, she had a narrowed gastric sleeve um, without evidence of a leak or obstruction. And she was then advanced to a diet and then discharged home by day four. Unfortunately, she was seen in the ER about three weeks later after non-compliance with her diet. Um, she was feeling nauseous. However, we obtained a repeat study which actually showed better flow of contrast. Uh, so she was later observed and then discharged home the next day. So this is a summary of our findings. Um, it's listed here and we found that at uh, three months follow-up, her BMI had actually dropped from 57 to 50. Uh, her complaints of reflux were resolved and she was quite happy with her operation. And although uh, some surgeons would argue that Rowan Y gastric bypass um, is the preferred revisional operation uh, after vertical band of gastroplasty, we found that in a select group of population such as this um, with extensive lower abdominal disease, um, with adhesions, um, we felt that uh, in our experience, laparoscopic sleeve hysterectomy was both technically feasible um, and also an effective operation. Thank you. Uh, if there are comments or questions, please step to the mic. Uh, Dr. Lee, help me out conceptually here. It seems to me that you thought that she had some obstruction and dilatation of the pouch to account for her symptoms, yet are you sure your operation adequately addressed that? You did this some dissection at the band, but how did you assure yourself intraoperatively that in fact you had taken care of that obstruction with the sleeve gastrectomy, which doesn't directly address that? Right, I, I think that was a very difficult um, choice because she did have a lot of scar tissue, um, but we felt that um, freeing up that centimeter uh, freed up enough tissue to adequately uh, provide some kind of an outlet. Uh, this is a partial obstruction, but not a complete obstruction, so we felt that uh, freeing up that little amount of tissue would actually help her in the end. Did, did you put an endoscope in a, after you had done that dissection? Or? Uh, we left the endoscope in place the whole so time. So you could see that you thought it was That's open? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Did you remove completely the Marlex uh, mesh? No, the Marlex band, um, it was almost fully incorporated, so we actually just lifted off that centimeter, and so a 270 degree um, remnant was actually left in place. Well, we'll see how she does. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.